All right, in this video, we're going to sketch the graph of the rational function x cubed minus 6x squared plus 6x minus 36 divided by x squared minus 5x minus 6. So to do this, I'm going to find the x and y intercepts, if there, uh, if there are any. Um, we'll think about asymptotes as well. Um, we'll think about if there are any holes in the graph. And then the other thing we'll do is just plot some points. Plot some additional points. So the first thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to factor this function. I'm going to factor the numerator and the denominator. So the numerator, x cubed minus 6x squared plus 6x minus 36, usually when I see 1, 2, 3, 4 terms, the first thing I think of is uh, factoring by grouping. So from the first two terms, we could factor out an x squared. Well, x squared times x would give us x cubed. x squared times negative 6 would give us negative 6x squared. Then from the second two terms, we could factor out a positive 6. And that would leave us with x minus 6. So we take... The stuff in front of the parentheses, the x squared and the positive 6, put those in one set of parentheses, and then multiply it by our common factor of x minus 6. Okay, so to factor the denominator, x squared minus 5x minus 6. I'm just going to play with numbers here. So I think we can use a negative 6 and a positive 1. Uh, so if we multiply negative 6 and positive 1, they'll multiply to negative 6, but add up to negative 5. And again, in the numerator, I notice there's this x minus 6 factor anyway. So, you know, I'm kind of not surprised that there's, there's, there's 1 in the denominator as well, because that's how we'll get our hole in the graph. All right, so it says our function, we can rewrite it as x squared plus 6 times x minus 6. And then again in our denominator, we said we had uh, x plus 1 and x minus 6. Okay. So again, we could go ahead and cancel things out, but I'm going to leave it just like that for, uh, for the moment. Okay, so um, a couple things here. I guess let's think about the x-intercepts, if there are any. So to do that, we take the numerator and set it equal to 0. Well, if we do x squared plus 6 equal to 0, we can subtract 6 from both sides. That'll give us x squared equals negative 6. But then when we take the square root, we're taking the square root of a negative number, which gives us complex numbers or imaginary numbers. And that tells us that there's no real solutions, which means there's no x-intercepts, at least based on the first factor. Okay, so if we look at x minus 6 and set that equal to 0, well, we could add 6 to both sides and get x equals 6, and we may be tempted to say, oh, we've got an x-intercept of 6, but actually notice if we plug that into our function, notice if we plug 6 into our function, we're actually going to get 0 over 0, and, well, dividing by 0 is certainly undefined. Um, and for a rational function, when we get 0 over 0, that tells us that there's actually going to be a hole at the x-coordinate of 6. So it turns out there's actually no x-intercepts at all for this function, which, again, is fine. To get the y-intercept, we just plug in x equals 0. And notice if we plug in 0, we'll have 6 times negative 6, which is negative 36 in the numerator. We'll have 1 times negative 6. Well, negative 36 over negative 6 is going to be positive 6. So it tells us that the point 0, 6 is also going to be on the graph. Okay? So, alrighty, let's think about, uh, let's think about our, our asymptotes now. So recall to find vertical asymptotes. We said the way to get the vertical asymptotes is we factor our function, we get rid of any common factors, and then we look at what's uh, left over after we get rid of our common factors. Okay, so it says uh, to find the vertical asymptotes, all we do is we just take the denominator and set it equal to 0. Well, we can just subtract 1 from both sides. 
and that will give us x equals negative 1 as our vertical asymptote. Notice we said, though, at x equals 6, there's a hole. And to get the coordinates of the hole, um, what we do is, again, we just look at, uh, we get rid of our common factors, and we look at the, 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 the portion that's left over, this x squared plus 6 over x plus 1, and we simply just uh, plug 6 into that everywhere for x. So we'll have 6 squared plus 6 over 6 plus 1. That's 36 plus 6, which is 42. 6 plus 1 is 7. Well, 42 over 7 is going to give us 6. So it tells us that the coordinates of the whole are actually at 6, 6. <clears throat> okay, so all useful information. I'll put that off to the side. Um, now we could uh, start thinking about horizontal and vertical asymptotes as well. Well, for horizontal asymptotes, notice that there's not going to be there's no horizontal asymptote in this case because the degree of the numerator is larger than the degree of the denominator. Okay, so when that happens, there's no horizontal asymptote. Okay, again because the degree of the numerator is larger than the degree of the denominator. But we know, in this case, the degree of the numerator is 3, the degree of the denominator is 2. Since the degree of the numerator is exactly 1 larger, there is going to be an oblique asymptote. OK, so to get the oblique asymptote, we'll have to do long division. We could do long division on this function, but there's no reason to do that. It'll take a couple extra steps. You know, after we factored and got rid of our common factors, we were left with x squared plus 6 over x plus 1. And that's what I'm going to do the long division using, x squared plus 6 over x plus 1. So I'm going to write that as x squared plus 0x plus 6, again, dividing by x plus 1. All right, well, let's see, x times x will be x squared. So if we distribute, we'll get x squared plus x. Again, we have to subtract everything. So that'll leave us with negative 1x. We can drop down our positive 6. So x times negative 1 will give us, well, negative x. We'll have minus 1 when we distribute, our negative 1. And if we uh, do the subtraction, it looks like we'll be left with positive 7 as our remainder. So again, what it says is, it says we can write uh, x squared plus 6 over x plus 1. It says we can write that as x minus 1 plus 7 over x plus 1. So again, just doing a little bit of algebra to break up our function. But again, all we do is we just look at this linear part to get our oblique or slant asymptote. So it says y equals x minus 1 is going to be the oblique asymptote. All right, so I think we've done most of the hard work now. Um, next, I'm just going to plot. I'm going to uh, make a graph using the information that we have so far. And then I'm just going to plot a few extra, a few extra values. So, all righty, so let's see here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so again, going to be clearly a, a very little rough sketch here. So we said 0, comma, uh, 6 was going to be a point on our graph. That was our, our uh, y-intercept that we found from a second ago. All right, we said there's no x-intercepts, so there's our, our point 0, 6. No x-intercepts. We said the vertical asymptote was at x equals negative 1. So let's put that on there. We said there's going to be a hole at 6, comma 6. So there's a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we'll put our hole right about there. Um, we said our slant asymptote. The slant asymptote was y equals x minus 1. That's what we found just a second ago. Okay, so that's a line that would uh, intersect uh, the y-axis at negative 1 and have a slope of 1. 
Notice if we plug 6 into our line, we would get 5, so it should be a little bit underneath of the, uh, the hole there. All right, so um, again, all I'm going to do now is just plot a few extra points and uh, keep my fingers crossed that my, my graph is correct. Okay? Again, you, know, you can always plot more points to get a better graph. So I guess a couple values to plug in. Let's see. I'm going to plug in negative 2 since that's close to the asymptote. I think I'll plug in negative 1 half as well. Um, and then I'm just going to plug in maybe 5 and 7 as well. Just a few extra points. So let's see. I'm going to look at when we uh, had it as x squared plus 6 over x plus 1. Again, in this simplified form, I'm going to look at it in this form. So let me call this g of x. I forget what we were calling it originally. but um, So let's see. If we plug in negative 2, We'll get negative 2 squared, which is 4 plus 6. That'll be 10. Um, negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. So it looks like we'll be left with negative 10. When we plug in negative 1 half, um, again, just plugging it into this function, negative 1 half times negative 1 half is 1 fourth plus 6. Negative 1 half plus 1 is going to be positive 1 half. And, well, dividing by 1 half is the same thing as multiplying by 2. So if we distribute the 2, we'll get 2 fourths, which is 1 half. Uh, 2 times 6 is going to be 12. So it looks like we get 12 and a half when we plug in negative 1 half. When we plug in 5, let's see, 5 squared is going to be uh, 25 plus 6 is 31. 5 plus 1 is going to be 6. So it looks like we get 5 and 1 sixth. And last but not least, let's plug in um, let's plug in 7. So 7 squared is going to be 49 plus 6 is going to be 55. Uh, 7 plus 1 is 8. Let's see, 8 goes into 55 six times with 7 left over. All right, so a few extra points here. Um, let me find my beautiful graph. And again, we'll just, uh, again, you can always uh, put in more points to get a better graph. So negative 2, negative 10 is roughly down here. Again, the graph would have to go down to negative infinity. It can't go up to positive infinity because then there would be an x-intercept. And so somewhere it's going to have to start getting close to this asymptote. So we'll assume maybe it just looks something like that. At negative 1 half, we're up here at 12.5. I'm not going to count it all off. We'll just put it somewhere right about there. Um, let's see, so the graph's going to have to go up to positive infinity. There's our y-intercept that we found. Let's see, um, on our line, this would be 5, 4. So we said the point 5 and 1, 6 is on there. So it's going to be right through there. So maybe it dips down a little bit. It goes through the hole 6, 6. So there's our hole in the graph. And then at 7, we're at 6 and 7, 8. So... And then it's going to start approaching, again, that asymptote eventually. So, all right, I think we've got a decent little rough sketch now of our, of our function. So, again, kind of long, a lot of steps, but again, a lot of it, you know, one key thing is to factor. And then use that uh, simplified, you know, use that, that easier simplified form like we did. All right, we factored it. And then we looked at that... Uh, you know, that function x squared plus 6 over x plus 1, use that to do the long division and things. That'll make your life at least a little bit easier.